I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. Today I'm going to walk you through painting this tiger in oil paint. I'm working on a Fredericks Pro Series oil primed linen canvas. I was really happy with how my paint moved across the surface of this canvas. It's nice and smooth, which was important for the detail I was doing. Another thing I really liked about this canvas were the stretcher bars. You don't generally think a whole lot about stretcher bars until you use a bad canvas that has cheap bars. Let me just tell you how many paintings I have hanging on my walls that I can't sell as they are because of the warped stretcher bars. This does not please me. I have never had a Fredericks canvas warp. This specific canvas takes the stretcher bars up another notch. They're really heavy. They're thick. You can feel the difference when you hold the canvas. These stretcher bars have quite a lip on them as well. This keeps the, paint, the front of the canvas from actually hitting the stretcher bar as you're painting. If you can't tell, I'm a huge fan of the Fredericks Pro Series oil primed linen canvases. So much so that I ordered a case after trying just one. I have new painting and drawing videos every Wednesday, so make sure you subscribe and follow me on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with my newest work. I use black and white paint thinned down with liquid to block in the general shapes of my clouds. I use the mop brush to blend out my brush strokes. I then go back in with more white paint to better define the clouds. Once that is in, I soften it up again with a mop brush. Next I start blocking in the eyes and orange areas of the tiger with raw sienna and a bit of light red. I use gray on the lighter areas. A bit of black on my really dark areas and I let this dry for a day before moving on. Day two and everything is now dry. I'm back to working on the clouds. Better defining the light areas and adding a bit more to the darker areas. I use the small mop brush to soften these spots into the background. Now I'm painting in the tiger stripes with black. I'm keeping these fairly sketchy, especially on the back end of each stripe where the black fur lays over the orange. Pay attention to the direction of the fur. This is extremely important. On to day three, everything is now dry. I start by adding a bit of shading with raw sienna and light red. I'm using a fair amount of liquid, keeping these glazes very thin. Next, I use white to soften some of the lighter areas and highlight others, still paying attention to the direction of the fur. I used a bit of burnt umber to darken areas around the face and shadow under the eyes. Light red and white was used for the nose. I'm using a rake brush to define the white areas of the face more. You cannot go around making spiky hairs just anywhere. In order to make the animal look realistic, you have to pay attention to the direction of the fur. I should also note that I do not solely depend on the rake brush to paint hair. I'll go back through with the liner brush as well to better define clumps of fur. On to day four, the previous day's paint is dry. For the eyes, you want to shadow the upper area of the eyeball. This shadow is caused by the upper lid. You want the brightest part of the eye to be the very bottom of the eye. These are very easy to do, but will make all the difference in the world in making the eye look realistic. 
Adding in the hairs around the tiger, it is important that you pay attention to the type of brush strokes you are making. You don't want to just go through a dabbing paint all over. These hairs need to overlap and still follow the direction of the fur pattern. I'm using white paint to create the texture and will later go back in to glaze raw sienna over it to bring back the depth of color. The same thing is done with the black stripes, bringing more detail to each hair that overlaps onto the fur behind it. I let those details dry. The next day, I start with the details in the eye. I use blue with a touch of white zinc for the base of the highlight on the eye. I add another glaze of raw sienna over my previous work. I also glaze a bit of blue over the shadowed areas of the white fur. I'm a huge believer in the more translucent layers, the better. They add so much depth to the finished painting. Back to the eye, I add a harsher white dot and then smudge it with my finger. I use a liner brush to add white highlights around the rim of the eyes as well. I do another glaze, this time with light red, bordering where the black and the pale orange fur meet. Now I'm adding more detail with white paint, focusing on where the white fur overlaps the darker fur. The next day I start by painting in the bubbles in black and white. I will later glaze turquoise over them. I want them to be very translucent, so it looks best if I do these steps separately. If I paint them turquoise now and tr just try to paint the shadows and highlights all in one step, they'll look flat and opaque. Moving back to the tiger, it's time for more glazing over yesterday's work. I used white for the details of the fur, even over the orange areas because of how opaque it is. The glaze over it tones the white down and brings the color back to raw sienna, or whatever color I glaze, yet it lets the detail of the fur still show through. I let all of that dry and then went back to the bubbles. I'm glazing turquoise over them using a lot of liquid to keep them very translucent. Next, I add a bit of white paint for highlights over that while still wet and soften them up with a soft mop brush. I use a liner brush with white paint to define some of the outer edges better. Back to the tiger, I used a liner brush to better define some of the white fur and paint it in the whiskers. That completes this oil painting of a tiger brought to you by La Cree Fine Art and Frederick's Canvases.